الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, divorce is taking place more than ever before more than half those who are getting married are actually divorcing at some point, some within the first few years of marriage. Is it because people don't know why they are getting married? Is it because people are not prepared to sacrifice? Is it because we are focused on something we're not supposed to be focused upon? Is it because we haven't developed our character and conduct? These are questions that scream for answers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allah says, that yes, divorce may happen as a last resort. Divorce will happen. It is happening. But when it does happen, be even more respectful after the divorce than you were within the marriage. Because there are rights that you need to fulfill after divorce that are so crucial to your contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness. Someone had a bad marriage. Unfortunately, they tried everything and then they divorced. When you divorce, you divorced in order to gain contentment. If you don't play your cards right thereafter, you will lose contentment in a bigger way than what was in the marriage, in that marriage that didn't work. So what are these rules and regulations? Number one, be very respectful. Number two, don't utter bad words about your ex. Number three, if there are children involved, make sure the custody and access is sorted out in a fair way. The person is biologically the father or the mother. They have rights. Remember to fulfill those rights with respect. If you don't, you will lose your contentment, you will lose your sleep, you will lose your health, you will lose the pleasure of the Almighty and there is no way that you're going to succeed. Don't let innocent children suffer and don't bad mouth your ex. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. If you finally and ultimately separate the two of you, if you have separated ultimately, Allah says He will provide for both of you from His virtue, from His mercy, from His kindness, from His goodness. He will provide for both of you. For indeed, His provision is very broad. He is very wise, subhanAllah. So Allah says we'll cater for both, but you need to be respectful. You need to be kind. You need to be very, very mindful of the fact that this person was your spouse at one stage. You will not achieve anything by uttering bad, ugly words thereafter and trying to prove who was wrong will not help you at all. Remember this. These are some golden words and I think many people lose their contentment after a divorce. Yet the whole reason of the divorce was in order to be content. The reason is they go wrong in playing the cards after the divorce and they don't understand it's Allah and Allah's plan that will grant you contentment, nothing else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Yes, if you need to say something or bear witness for someone uh, respectfully, privately to say, this is what happened, that's why I actually ended up divorcing. Sometimes you might want to be marrying again and your future spouse might ask you what went wrong. It is their right to ask you if they want to know, they might want to hear your side of the story and they might want to find out the other side as well. It needs to be presented respectfully. I would prefer if someone were to say, the two of us were reasonable people, we didn't get along, we were both good but we had different likes or dislikes or habits etc. The nature was different and you say something respectful. But if a person were to insult and if a person were to become very low in their character and conduct, they would lose contentment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter in Surah An-Nisa also reminds us of something interesting regarding prayer. We pray. I'd like to hope we pray five times a day because we're Muslim. If you're a Muslim, you should be praying five times a day. But my brothers and sisters, when we pray, don't be lazy. Don't get up in a lazy fashion. Sometimes I've corrected myself and I still keep correcting myself. When I think to myself, we say to each other, Hang on, I've got 15 minutes, let me quickly pray and I'll be back. The word quickly is out of sync. It should not be there. Why should you say, let me quickly pray, I'll be back in, in, in a minute? Don't say that when it comes to Allah. Take your time. Pray. 
It might be the last prayer that you're ever going to get a chance to pray. Subhanallah. So let's try and word our things correctly. Don't say, okay, let me quickly dash into the masjid, I'll be back. Why? It's the house of Allah. Take your time. Don't use those words. Even if you are in a rush, don't use those words. You can go and quickly come back. But don't say, I'm going to quickly go. Because you may lose contentment. Contentment is found in salah. Contentment is found in the house of Allah. Contentment is found in the obedience of Allah. If you were to rush through that, you would be compromising that contentment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 142 of Surah An-Nisa. Allah is describing the hypocrites and he says when they stand up for prayer, they stand very, very lazily. They are lazy. They are standing by the way and it's like a big burden on them. That's hypocrisy. Stay far from hypocrisy. Don't let salah be a burden. Many of us, when our children watch us fulfill salah, they don't want to read salah. The reason is they see us lazy. When it comes to salah, it's like a chore. It's so burdensome. But if they saw us smiling, happily getting up, beautiful, getting up for salah and, you know, uh, being with such good character, with a good expression on your face, your children will want to fulfill the salah because they know mom is always happy when she's with Allah. Dad is always smiling when he's going to the masjid, etc. They will want that contentment as well. So let's learn to correct the expressions on our faces and we will achieve contentment. Here Allah is saying the hypocrites are those whom they don't remember Allah much. What do they do? They don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. They, they want to show off to the people and they want to, they want to show off rather than showing off to Allah to the wrong people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. It's a very beautiful point. We move on to the next surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of halal, halal and haram, to make sure that you consume that which is halal. If you would like contentment, stay away from that which is prohibited. How do you expect happiness, contentment and goodness when what you are putting in your mouth is unclean, impure and filled with the displeasure of Allah? So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in many verses in Surah Al-Ma'idah, uh, beginning with verse number four, Allah says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا أُحِلَّ لَهُمْ قُلْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ They are asking you what is permissible for them to consume. Tell them that all that which is pure and good is permissible. Amazing. This verse has a double meaning. On one hand, Allah is saying that which is pure and good is permissible. And he is also saying whatever is permissible is definitely pure and good. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from those who are really keen on knowing what is halal, what is haram, because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says there will come a time close to the end when people will not be bothered whether they are eating from halal or haram. And eating from halal or haram is not only about whether the animal was slaughtered in the proper way, but it's also connected to whether you earned your money in a pure way and whether there was deception in it or not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment through the consumption of the food that we, we eat. Rather have less that is halal than to have more that is haram and forbidden. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something else which will also bring about much contentment. Sometimes we get angry with people, we're upset with people, we dislike people and we become unjust with those people because of our dislike for them. Allah warns us in this regard, verse number 8 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Listen to how beautifully he words it. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُهَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْطَ وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ O you who believe, stand firm for justice. Stand firm for justice for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't let your dislike for a people lead you to injustice against them for that reason. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah says, be just for it is better 
regarding or it is better for your relationship with Allah when you are just. It is better regarding the taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed you to achieve. And Allah says, be conscious of Allah at all times. Remember Allah is watching you. When you dislike someone, it doesn't mean you need to peddle bad about them. It doesn't mean you should be unjust and lie about them simply because you dislike them. Whether you like them or not, you must be just. We go back to a story of Shurayh al-Qadi. He was a judge at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And there was a certain discrepancy between Ali radiallahu anhu and a Jewish man. And Shurayh knew uh, that Ali radiallahu anhu was actually speaking the truth, but due to evidence, he, he uh, ruled in favor of the Jewish man. As a result, the Jewish man actually entered the fold of Islam when he saw the justice. That even against the Khalifa, there was actually a ruling made, which means because these people had actually ruled in favor of someone, perhaps they may have disliked I've actually now embraced this whole faith because it proves that no way they are just people. Imagine our justice against our own friends. We are failing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding and may He grant us goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 27 makes mention of the story of Adam, the children of Adam. What happened with them? They lost contentment because they became jealous. Jealousy makes you lose contentment. Remember, one of the sons of Adam السلام, became jealous of the other. As a result, he lost contentment. Allah says, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ أَبْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكِ Recite the verses of the children of Adam, recite the story in these verses of the children of Adam, Habil and Qabil, Abel and Cain, where subhanAllah, one of them had actually said that he would kill the other because the sacrifice that he had made was accepted and the one from Cain was not accepted. This caused a great disturbance in mankind. It caused murder and lack of contentment, which resulted in great crime. Remember, be happy with what Allah has bestowed upon you. Be happy for others. Don't become jealous. When you're happy for others and what Allah has given them, Allah will grant you contentment. It is a very difficult quality to achieve. May Allah grant that to us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi-dhikri Allahi ala bi-dhikri Allahi tatma'innu